In May of 1870, the Northern Pacific Railroad chose to start construction in Kalama for a railway that would ultimately reach the Puget Sound. Emboldened by the prospect of cheap land in the Washington Territory, and pressured by the deadline set by Congress to reach the Sound, Northern Pacific worked diligently laying tracks from Kalama to Tacoma. In the Northern Pacific's first issue of its newspaper known as The Beacon, they loudly proclaimed, Rail Meet Sail, generating enthusiasm for Kalama as a leading port on the Pacific. That proclamation set in motion the town of Kalama as we know it today. Business boomed in Kalama for three years, bringing the town three to 4,000 people seemingly overnight. With all of those people came the needs of a modern town, water, electricity, housing, and industry. The intersection between the railroad and the Columbia River was an important one. Many industries such as fishing thrived, grew, and evolved over the years. Timber was another vital industry to this region in the late 1800s and early 1900s. Mills were often located along the Columbia River for ease of transport of finished products like cedar shakes and milled lumber. In 1877, the board of directors of the Northern Pacific passed the resolution that effectively moved its headquarters to Tacoma. In the years that followed, Kalama's population dwindled down to about 700 residents. Though Kalama was no longer where the headquarters was stationed, it remained an important terminus to Portland. Four years before that consequential vote, Kalama officially became the capital of Cowlitz County, where its seat remained until 1922. The Casano House, which was built by the railroad, was repurposed in the county offices. Through its ups and downs, one thing has remained consistent. Kalama continues to be a rich and vibrant community built on the foundation provided by Northern Pacific, blessed with the Columbia River, and rich with timber. So we're gonna drive up Elm Street here towards the school. Um, off to the left over here, this is the old historic downtown that was partially uh, built with the Northern Pacific Railway funding. This actually, this road right here was improved by the WPA uh, back in 1937. They did a little bit of work uh, back then, um, like up on the left here, this community building, which uh, was built by the WPA, ultimately replaced uh, the county courthouse that used to be there up until 1922. And then I've always loved this house right here. This is like uh, a house that was built by a Civil War veteran back in the day. It's kind of striking, I thought. So the elementary school is actually that way, but I wanted to take a look up here and kind of look at the old school. So this is like the old, the old school house right here to the left. It's now a private residence um, that was built in the late 19th century uh, and was ultimately converted to, to a house and the school was, was actually relocated over to this site uh, right in front of us um, and you can see the on here we've got the St. Catholic's Church, St. Joseph Catholic Church there uh, that was built, rebuilt in 1909. Um, this school actually uh, was built in the late 30s and it was the third school on its site the school was located here in 1905 and then that was ultimately taken down and rebuilt as a grade school in 1921. Uh, right over up here you could see the the district office uh, currently. That used to be where the high school was back in 1921 and they were connected um, there. But again this is the third kind of iteration if you will of that but that's what people think of as the historic school in Kalama. Uh, you can get a little glimpse of the middle school that's under construction right up there. Uh, this is the old senior parking lot down here, kind of made famous by the movie Twilight. Uh, you can actually see this is where where Bell's truck was, I think somewhere in here. I've actually never seen the movie, but, but that's the shot there of that. The th one of the things that's always struck me about the placement of the new elementary school is just how it pops. Uh, pops out uh, when you drive up the hill relative to kind of everything else. But before we get to that, you'll see the elementary school library, the old elementary school library, which will be converted into uh, an athletic center for the, for the high schoolers. And of course, peeking out here is the old elementary school, but off to the right there, that's what's really impressive is, is the new elementary school and kind of how that that really just comes out of the hillside.
my first introduction to, that there was an issue with facilities in our district came from our community. I think there was an awareness that we had issues and problems, but we had a long history of making do and making adjustments, and that started a process that we affectionately referred to in our, our uh, planning process called whack-a-mole, um, where we were trying to solve one problem and it created another down the line, and so we, we, we identified the fact that we're not able to actually uh, solve problems, we just were starting to uh, move them around and make them look different. That began this, this uh, process of evaluating, so what are the facility needs? The biggest issue was that we started to see that our facilities were impeding, they were becoming an impediment to teaching and learning. Well, I think the biggest thing the new school does is it just kind of gets out of the way and lets teachers do what they need to do. It gives them the space they need, it gives them the resources they need, and allows the building to really be a partner with us for kids' education instead of our old building kind of got in the way a lot. Um, it really just gives us the room we need to kind of do what we need to do and, and just kind of let teachers do their thing. I'm Jonah uh, with VLRB Architects and this is Clem Elementary School. Let's go take a look inside. And now we're here in the main office. We just passed through the secure vestibule. So when school starts, those doors are locked down and the kids actually come in here or the visitors, parents. Out here, you get a really good quality 270 degree view of the campus. That passive supervision was really important, obviously for security reasons. And now let's go see the rest of the school. Now that we've checked in, let's walk throughout the rest of the school. So right now we're in the main entry lobby. Uh, so one thing that we did here is we wanted to orient people to this three-story space in a very easy way. Uh, so grade level groupings that all tie into the Rails Meet Sale theme. So as you walk along, this kind of gives you a sense of where you're at in the facility. Just a real easy way for people to organize themselves and see where to go. And we'll visit some of that later. And now we're in the gymnasium, uh, one of the really great community assets here. And with something that was really important for the, for the district. Uh, you can have high school games in here. The connectivity uh, is something that was really important, but also just a lot of natural daylight. We wanted to have a lot of natural daylight in here. So you got connection to the commons, second and third floor to the stage. You could have big performances. You could have a variety of people in here. You could have PE, you could have athletics. One of the big, really big elements besides just teaching and learning and promoting teaching and learning was this idea that the school is the center of the community, right? And so our design needed to, to invite the community in. And so things like our operable walls, those were designed with a purpose. They weren't just because we want to have operable walls and they're cool and fancy. It's because we want to be able to open that up and be able to invite the community in. So let's go over to the common space here. In any normal period, this would be a two period lunch with tables everywhere. Good connectivity to the gymnasium, to the music stage area, but also to the corridor there. You can see the sectional doors up, so that flow from inside to out was really important. Connectivity to the outdoors was really important too, and having uh, an opportunity to connect to the outside. So this commons really is a very central element to the whole project. Up on the stage, this really doubles as a music room. Um, but is, is the stage as well. So just kind of anything that's typical to a music room. You got your cyclorama uh, curtains, uh, backdrop, but also amenities for a classroom as well. Uh, writable surfaces, wardrobes, and sink. Uh, and then of course, a, a teacher. <laughs> hey Matt. <laughs> now that we've taken a look at the music room, let's look at the really important stuff, the actual organization of the school and the grade level groupings. Uh, so each grade has a house, and each house is representative of a piece of history in Kalama and something that ties into that Rails meets sales concept. So here we're at the River House in the first grade. Uh, we wanted these elements to really be great teaching tools for students, uh, where students here can learn about orientation, scale, and geography. Now that we've talked about the concept, let's go ahead and walk into one of the houses. Uh, you can see each house has its own restrooms. Uh, student restrooms. They also have small group rooms on the side over here. Um, and this one's actually outfitted for a class right now. So this is really the heart of the small learning community or the house. Uh, this is the first grade learning commons. This is really a flexible, adaptable, and agile space that binds all the classrooms together and gives flexibility for uh, a variety of teaching and learning. 
So obviously we had all of our design process before COVID hit. So when you're talking about how the building is reactive or responsive to COVID, it's, it really comes back to one of our guiding principles was that the spaces were going to be flexible. And we have pushed some of these spaces to their maximum flexibility in COVID. Um, we've got as many kids as we can in, we've, uh, in different spaces. We've been creative about the spaces we've used. We've even flipped some things. You couldn't have done that if the building hadn't been designed to be flexible. So there's been a number of things with COVID. Um, the co learning common spaces, which were designed to be a collaborative space, in some cases we're using as classrooms because we needed more square footage. Uh, so we're using things not in the way they were necessarily designed or intended to be in some cases, but because they were intended to be and designed to be flexible, we've been able to flex them to meet our needs during COVID. Um, over here, you can see teacher planning. You see a small group room over here, and then five classrooms that basically surround the learning commons. It's, it's equipped with all the amenities, sink, bubbler, AV equipment, um, for a variety of projects and art and you, you name it. Each classroom uh, is, is pretty comparable with the others. Uh, we've got displacement ventilation. Um, we've got the smart board or the interact display. And we've also got a learning wall over here. So this is at every classroom, just having that flexibility and having storage behind that. The things that I value from, from the project really is the manner in which the facility does uh, promote teaching and learning. As you look through this building, uh, there are features all throughout the building from the uh, STEM lab to the learning commons and these types of features that promote teaching and learning. And to me, that the fact that we were able to hang on to that is a big deal uh, because you don't see schools organized the way our school is organized very much and so um, we're really excited about that. So we'll end our tour on the first floor with the boat house, which is the kindergarten house here. You can see the, the graphic is actually a maze, which I'm pretty excited about. Uh, as you walk in, some of the things that are very similar, uh, obviously staff restroom. There's no student restroom over here because those are all in the, in the classrooms themselves. Lots of tackable surfaces, small group room over here. So in the learning commons, even though they're the, very similar, they're set up differently and they're set up to adapt to the lesson plan of that day. One element that's really fantastic about all of these uh, learning commons is just the view out towards the river. Um, they've oriented that way and it gives phenomenal daylighting and just gives a really good connection to the outside. Now that we're done touring the first floor, let's go up to the third floor and continue the tour. Now that we're on the third floor, let's go take a look at the train house. This is actually the fifth grade class, classroom wing. Uh, one thing you'll notice that each one of these is color-coded. That's to help facilitate wayfinding and for students to be able to find their way around the building. But being on the third floor, you get the added benefit of a great view and a lot of volume. Big difference on the third floor is cubbies out in the hallway, not in the classrooms. What's really great about the third floor is that no matter where you are in this building, you get really great connection to the, the public spaces and a lot of natural light. As you can see, the Rails Meet Sales concept still comes through, so it really ties into Kalama's history and legacy with the Rail House. I think the building elements itself really help the building tie to the history and the past. So from the way that the entrance is built to look like the rail car and the ships to the, the plates we have at the entrance of every house, we really tried to literally at every corner 
pay a tribute to the Kalama community and its history. Uh, the round windows at the front of the building represent or are supposed to harken back to the shipping industry and, and the, the influence that that had on Kalama. Um, the design of each learning commons or each house, each learning house, uh, for each grade level. You'll see porch graphics as, you've, as you walk throughout the building. Those are all themed to Kalama uh, history and, and elements in Kalama today, uh, from uh, fishing to the forestry industry. The building definitely reflects the character of the community. It's really a convergence of history and modern. We're here in a new building that's very modern, that provides modern amenities to give kids experiences and an education that is the best we can offer for this present day. So it gives respect to the history while still giving to that future and providing that opportunity for the future. Um, and it also is fairly future proof. You know, this is, this is a building that has some extra classrooms and things like that that will allow us to grow and still stay within the same building. Hey, now we're down at the third floor. Let's go walk down to the second floor and finish our tour. So here on the second floor, we've got two more houses, the mill house and the timber house. So I think the building was really personalized to our identity and our community uh, in a lot of ways. It, everything from the physical design to the elements that we put inside um, to the programming that we're delivering inside of it. Uh, the BLRB architectural team and our long range process uh, really helped us go, go slow to go fast and was really thorough and thoughtful in figuring out what we wanted to do and how we wanted the building to represent the community. And so then they just build it and it does that exact thing and it just really represents what Kalama is and where Kalama kind of has been and where it's going. Um, all of those things are really meant to uh, serve a purpose and they came you know, with a lot of really thoughtful and purposeful decision making. Let's get to the heart of the building, one of the most exciting features which is the STEM lab and the media center over here. Let's take a walk into the heart of the school, the STEM lab. This is something that the school's never had before, uh, the ability to have flexible project learning in here. But we're in the middle of the whole school right here. There's no windows directly to the outside, but you can see to, to the river, you can see out to the forest, you can even see the playground from here. And what's really cool about it is it's conducive to art and science. It's got a lot of natural daylight, a lot of connection to the outdoors, and it's a phenomenal space. have facilities that we've never had before in that past. So as an example, uh, our, our art room, right? We never had an art room in our elementary school. Well now we, we don't just have an art room, but we have a STEM lab where kids can do art, but they can also do robotics. So they can do some of the things they might have done in a traditional elementary school, but they can also do things that they would have never been able to do because they have a, a STEM lab, right? Uh, with a green screen and all kinds of, uh, of opportunities for them to create. So why the slide? Its purpose is really play, education, and even safety. It was uh, an idea that was actually suggested by the, the principal, and the idea was to really incentivize reading. We kind of jokingly said, you know, why don't we put a slide there? But then when you really start looking at it, this library looks like a treehouse. It kind of cantilevers out over the back entry, and it really looks like a place that needs a slide. And so the slide is, was designed to be in the library, and so kids meet their reading goals, and then they get to go out on the slide and, and these sorts of things. There was this kind of running joke for, for really weeks and months on end about, Jonah, when, when are you going to put a slide into the project? And I thought it was literally a joke. <laughs> so one day I just sketched up something and then texted it to, to the superintendent and to the principal and immediately got a text back saying, yes, we want the slide. <laughs> so it's kind of how it came to be. But it's something that we're, we're fundraising for right now. We actually um, have helped the district with a fundraising campaign called Slide to the Finish. Um, and <laughs> we, uh, it looks like we're about halfway there. Uh, using dollars from our partners and from the contractors. And the next step is just to finish that out and get the slide built.
One of the factors that, that really made a big difference in this project from beginning to end was the partnership with BLRB. They were just really uh, consummate team members and problem solvers. BLRB spent a lot of time really getting to know what is Kalama. It's a very unique community. BLRB really took time to find out what the issues were and make sure that they were finding solutions to address those issues so they weren't just coming in and saying, you know, this is what it's going to look like. It was like, what do you need and what are the problems that you're facing and then how can we make a design that meets those needs and solves those problems for you. And so there was a ton of collaboration in that. So maintaining the vision of the school district while also being cognizant of the budget was honestly one of the biggest challenges that we had. There was a time when we were pretty significantly over budget. How are we going to do this without cutting program, without cutting you know the needs for the school district, but also giving them a, a quality building that would l live as long as their historic high school doing a lot of listening, again, having a really good team, whether that was my design team at BLRB Architects and partners there, um, or the, our consultants were just very diligent about finding opportunities to, to cut costs, and the contractor through the GCCM process and finding opportunities to save money, not just during design, but also during construction. So it just it was, all came down to collaboration and teamwork. We had challenges that many team members on our team had never seen in their careers. And this is, you know, contractors and architects and, and others from wildfires to the pandemic. We worked together and, and BLRB really took the lead on that.